Class, welcome to our next video on section 4.1. Um, so far, we have introduced the concept of polynomials, or maybe reintroduced the concept of polynomials, um, how to graph them, how to uh, distribute so that we can write an equation. Then yesterday, or I should say in our last video, uh, depending on when you're watching it, we worked on multiplicity. And now what we're going to do, guys, is we're really going to focus on grabbing information from graphs. Okay? I feel like so far I've given you, I've given you equations, I've given you zeros, etc., and I've had you, do, I've had you graph. Now I want to start learning how to work backwards. Okay? So when we look at these four graphs up at the top, we notice a few things. Hopefully we all agree these are all, these all have n behavior of up, up up, 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 okay? So all of these definitely are going to have an even degree. All right, we know that. If we look even further, uh, we can use a couple of different hints. Um, we can use turning, point, turning points, or we can use x-intercepts. It turns out that every single one of these has degree 4, okay? Every single one of these graphs has degree 4. So we're going to write that. Now, how did I know that? Well, we use some of our hints. Okay, how many zeros is it, are in this graph? One, two, three, four. Okay, this one has four zeros. This one has one zero. This one has zero zeros or no zeros, and then this one has two. Okay, so what I want you to kind of think about here is, well, this picture, this graph, has four. This one has zero. So what we are going to say, guys, is that a polynomial can have at most, and in this case, at most, four zeros. All right? Now, if we take a look at turning points, every single one of these graphs, let's see, one, two, three... 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. All of these have, at most, three turning points. All right. Um, the reason that we're doing this is because there are some rules that we need to understand that we have in this box. Okay, For a polynomial, when it's written in standard form, we know that it has nth degree, okay, nth degree, that's coming from right here, well, what we say is, then it has at most n minus 1 turning points, and at most n zeros. Now, this is important, because there doesn't have to always be exactly n zeros. We saw this above, right? Even though my degree was 4, this had no zeros. And what's really happening, guys, is these zeros, like if we were solving this, we would get complex solutions, and we cannot graph complex solutions. We're not there yet, but we will get to complex solutions in a little bit, okay? So we take a look. Let's see what's going on here. We want to start by practicing one more graphing problem. <clears throat> and we know that from our original standard or standard form of a polynomial, we know that our end behavior, we're going to look at this first piece right here. So negative 2x to the fifth, which means what? It's odd and it's negative. So it's going to start up and end down. All right, this is what I need to see. This is what you think. This is what I see. This is what we think. Okay? <clears throat> now, to find zeros in multiplicity, we're definitely going to have to factor this. Okay? So I'm going to come factor over here just because I have more room. I have f of x. What can I definitely take out of everything? Well, I definitely see a 2. I'm probably going to want to move the negative out. And I see an x. So I'm going to take out negative 2x which would leave me with positive x to the fourth, negative 8x squared, and positive 16. Okay. All right, I move on. 
I keep that negative 2x there, but I know I have a trinomial, so I'm going to try to factor it using our normal factoring methods. The only difference is this is x to the fourth, so these have to be x squareds. All right? Well, this is actually pretty nice. That's just minus 4 and minus 4. All right? So, we can continue. I can say this goes to x minus 2, x plus 2, and then I can do this as x minus 2, x plus 2. And really, guys, I'm okay with this if you want to leave it like this. What I also want you to kind of understand that you can do, though, is you have two x minus 2s, right? So there's going to be some multiplicity. We'll get there in a second. But we can also write that with multiplicity, right? If I have two of them, I can square it. All right, so I would consider this the most factored form. <clears throat> All right, so now that we have factored that, we need to find our zeros in the multiplicity. For this, you can look at either one of these. If we look at this first one, I would say, well, this first piece, and remember what we're doing when we're finding zeros. We're setting the function, or setting the equation equal to zero, and using the zero product property. So if I set this piece equal to zero, the negative 2x, I would get a zero of zero. And how many of them are there? Just one. So mult one. When I look at my next piece, either place you want to look at, you can go x minus 2. Well, that leads to a 0 of positive 2. And again, if you look at this first piece, this, this uh, second to last function, I know there's multiplicity of 2 because I see that there are two of them. Or if you look here, you know it's squared, so that tells you multiplicity as well. All right, and then of course our last one is kind of the same. So what's happening? If we have a 0 with an odd multiplicity, it crosses. And if I have a multiplicity with an even degree, it bounces. So that will be helpful in a little bit. Find the y-intercept, your choice. I strongly encourage you, when it's given in standard form, you can just look for the constant, right? If you plug in 0 everywhere, this is 0, 0, 0, okay? I know my y-intercept is 0, 0. If you're given factored form, just plug in 0 everywhere, and it would be the same exact thing, because this piece would be 0, and 0 times anything is 0. So now we can put everything together. I can draw this graph. I know that I have a 0 at 0. I know I have at negative 2 and at positive 2. Let me just write those in so you have them. I know that my y-intercept is already there, and then lastly, I know that my end behavior is up to down. All right? So now what we have to take into consideration here are the bounces, right? Bounces and crosses. So at negative 2, this first x-intercept I have to hit, there's going to be a bounce. So I have to bounce, something like that. And then what happens? It crosses right through 0, so it's going to have to maybe do something like this. And then you know it has to go back through 2. Or actually, let me rephrase that. Does it go through, or does it bounce? It bounces. So something like that. And that is a pretty decent picture. All right? OK. So what I was trying to get into now, or, at the, or with the title, or the intro, I want to be able to look at a graph and figure out an equation from a graph. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to have us do, guys, <clears throat> I'm going to have us look and kind of think about the end behavior. I know that this is ending up and up. Okay, so if I think about end behavior, and I know that's up, up, that tells me things, right? That tells me I need to have a positive leading coefficient, and it has to be even degree. All right, so that's what we need to get to. That's what we need to get to. Well, let's see what's going on. The next thing, think about, I mean, what have we been doing to go the other way, to graph? We need to get the zeros. Well, let's look at the zeros. I have zeros at negative 2, negative 1, positive 1, positive 2. So what you need to remember here, though, guys, is what? Once I have a 0, <clears throat> 
I know that it leads to a factor. I want to write it as a factor. So if I have one, two, three, four zeros or four x-intercepts, I should have four sets of parentheses. And this is a negative two, right? If my zero here is negative two, what factor do I get from that? Well, x plus two. And if this one's negative one, well, this should be x plus one and so on. This is a positive one, so x minus 1, and lastly, x minus 2. Now the one thing that we need to kind of add to this, we need to put an a value out front, okay? We don't know, we don't know exactly what the leading coefficient is, but we know that it's supposed to be positive, and we know that it has to be something so that we can get to our y-intercept. So that's the next thing we need to think about. We know that our y-intercept is where? 0, 4. 0, 4. We have to use this information, okay? So make sure you write this down. Use the y-intercept to find a value. Always, 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 always. What do I mean by that? Well, I know that if I plug in 0 for every single x, what should my output be? 4. So 4 equals a times positive 2, positive 1, negative 1, negative 2. Does everyone see what I did there? I just plugged in 0 everywhere and set my output equal to 4. So now if I keep going here, I have 4 equals something times a. 2 times 1 is 2, times negative 1, negative 2, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Okay, so this very clearly a is equal to 1, which is really nice. Once we have a is 1, we know that we can rewrite without any a value at all. Okay, so we have x plus 2, x minus, or sorry, x plus 1. Let's go x minus 1 and then x minus 2. All right, we're getting there. Last thing we need to consider, guys, we want to write this as a polynomial in standard form. We want to write this in standard form, so we have to do some distributing. Now do this smart. Do this in a smart way. Do this as smartly, if that's a word, as possible. What I mean by that is these are nice together, right? These are conjugates of one another. So I know that when I multiply x plus 2 times x minus 2, it's kind of going to be, not kind of, it will be, x squared minus 4, right? Isn't that how a difference of squares factors? Okay, this is just a reverse difference of squares. Same thing over here. That makes it way easier, right? It's not always going to work like that, but when you can do it, do it, please. All right, the final thing we would do is distribute here, okay? So x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. Then I'm gonna do my outers and my inners, so negative one, negative four. So I have negative five x squared. If you're not seeing that in your head, please just do both of the distributions and combine them. Lastly, negative four, negative one, positive four. All right, so that, is our graph, or sorry, our function for this graph. It all depends on where the zeros are and where that y-intercept is. So let's do one more to finish up the video and you will be on your way. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Again, I start, I kind of look at n behavior. I know that this is going down, down, which means I should have a negative leading coefficient, but still even degree. All right, cool. What did we do next? The next thing we did, we started to look at the x-intercepts. We started to look at the x-intercepts, or the zeros. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remember we always put that a there, but I'm going to make three sets of parentheses. Why? Because I have three x-intercepts. There are three zeros. One of them is at negative 2, so that would get me to x plus 2 for my factor. This one's here at positive 1, so I have a minus 1. And then over here, 1, 2, 3, okay, x minus 3. All right, now hopefully there's some red flags going off, some warning signs, something. Didn't we say that there had to be 
an even degree. If I multiplied this out right now, what would happen? X times X times X. I would only have X cubed. All right, I would only have X cubed. That is not an even degree. So what we need to do is we need to go back. We need to figure out. I think one of these has multiplicity. Not that one. That's crossing. Oh, here we go. This factor, or this zero, I should say, has multiplicity of two because it's bouncing, which means that that factor also has to have the multiplicity of two. So I, for X minus one, I'm going to put a nice big squared there. All right. Now we should be good, right? One, two, three, four. Okay, we're ready. We're we're in business now. We keep going. Our y-intercept is zero three. So I plug in three for my y, and I start to try to solve for a. So I plug in zero for all of my x's. So this is two. This will be negative one, but squared, and this will be negative three. All right, let's keep going. Two, or let's go this way first. What's negative one squared? Positive one. Positive one times two is two. Two times negative three is negative six. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Be very careful when you divide a equals negative one half. Sweet. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Now one thing I will suggest, and you'll notice I'm going to write this a little differently than I wrote it above. I'm going to expand this as much as possible. Which, What I mean by that is I'm going to write two, or I'm going to write the factor x minus one twice. All right, That's going to really, really help us when we start to distribute. Hopefully that makes sense. right? If I had two of them, you can always just rewrite it as two of them. Okay, so now this just turns into a giant distribution problem, a giant, giant foiling problem. So I'm going to say this is equal to negative one half. Remember this, save this till the end. Don't worry about this yet. There's really not a great way to do this. There's no conjugates, so I'm just going to do it as I see it. I'm going to say that this is going to be x squared and then outers and inners. So that's negative one, positive two. Okay, positive x minus 2, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing with my other two. So x squared, negative 3, negative 1, so negative 4x, and then plus 3. What are we going to do? We're going to keep distributing. All right, I'm actually going to change this right now to a bracket, just so we, hopefully we can kind of see what's going on. Like, there's going to be a lot of terms in here a lot. I know that I have to distribute this x squared to every piece of this one, and then I have to go back and I have to distribute this x to every piece, and then the negative 2 to everything. All right, so let's stay organized. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times negative 4x is negative 4x cubed. x squared times positive 3 is plus 3x S squared. Duh. Okay, one thing I kind of do is I kind of, if you, well, you don't have to, but I kind of make a mark or something so I know that I'm done with that one. And now I move on. x times x squared, positive x cubed. Negative 4x squared, positive 3x. So I'm running out of room. I'm done with this one now, though. Let's see if I can do it. Negative 2x squared, positive 8x, and lastly, negative 6. I just barely made it. Okay, before we worry about the negative one half, please, please, please combine all like terms. It's just going to make it easier. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I guess I really didn't need the square brackets. Uh, x to the fourth, that's the only x to the fourth, so that's good. I see a couple x cubes, so boom, let's see here. What do we got? Negative 3x cubed. Then if I look at my squareds, let's go... So negative 1, negative 3, negative 3x squared. I have a couple of x's, so that's plus 11x. And then lastly, this one on its own, negative 6. Okay. So to finish off this problem, the last thing we need to do is just multiply this negative 1 half into everything. So negative, oh shoot, let's go like that. I'm sorry about that, guys. Negative 1 half x to the fourth. 
this is going to be plus 3 halves x cubed plus 3 halves x squared minus 11 halves x plus 3. And we are done with this problem. All right, so from this video, I really, really wanted you to be able to kind of understand and see the pattern with zeros and turning points. And then I also really wanted you to be able to analyze a graph, something like this one above, see a graph, and be able to write a polynomial function for that graph. All right, I hope this is making sense. As always, take notes, circle things you don't understand, go back, rewatch, whatever you got to do. Come with questions tomorrow, and we will practice some more. Have a great day. Peace.